It's a little beauty, look. A little piggy chef who's tossing a pancake. I recently did something on pigs, and then I discovered, as I was coming away from the filming, that there were one or two pigs I'd left out. And I went through previous films. You probably notice we often do themes of films, and I did one on trains and one on handles and things. So I've gone through the collection, picking up the ones that were missing, the ones that were left or overlooked. And here's the first two examples, which should have been put amongst the, um, the toy pigs. Instead, they're going to be put along some other strange toys. But this one is a beauty. It's made by St. Ledger people who have made marvellous Thompsons. And when you push this little thing at the side, it's got a little tiny bead to it. As you push it, its arm moves up and down. And when you push it any hard, the pancake takes off. Whoa! He's launching the pancake. It's Pancake Tuesday, perhaps. <whistles> what a chef. The only trouble is it doesn't turn over. Never mind that. Never mind. What a lovely idea. So a little picky chef... Very small scale and a real beauty of a, of a toy pig. Here's another one I discovered. This is 35 years old. It's a Milton Bradley toy called Pass the Pigs. It comes in a little box. I can undo it. Ooh! There's the pigs in the middle. Look, they are. Score pads, instructions, buyers. What's it all about? It's an extraordinary idea. You get these two pigs, which are both, well, we'll get them pointing to each other like that. And the idea is to toss them in the air and see how they fall down. And they'll fall down in various ways, as this little thing shows. So if I pick them up, give them a little shake like that in my hands, put them down, and we see them both lying down, but I think they're, yes, the opposite ways, so it doesn't count as anything at all. That's no good, let's do it again. It's a bit like dice in a way. Oh, two lying down. Any better than that? One on its, no, no, there's both three lying down. Must be better than that. Ah, there we are. There's one who's actually standing on his legs. That's five points, I think. Yes, five points. The one's on his back as well, so that's another five points. So it's a bit like mad dice, because the idea is these pigs can fall down in about five different ways. That's the ordinary standing on their legs. That's lying on the side, either way. That counts as one point or no points. It can lie on its back like that, which is a sweet. And then there's two other moves where you get more points. There's one is it's... It's resting on its snout. Can you see the snout? It's, and there's one more very subtle move where you push it to the side slightly and it's now a, it's balanced on the snout and the ear and you get another 20 points for that, I think it is. Especially when you get two of them which do produce that. So you just do this many, many times, point and let them fall down. Usually they land on the side, but sometimes do something a little more interesting and then you start getting points that you score. There we are, he's on his back, so that's a few more points. And it's a delightful game and these are a nicely, nicely made... Bits of plastic, but I think, oh yes, so they're getting a bit matey there, I think. Oh look, he's on his snout. That's ten points, I think it is. So what a delightful idea. This is a 1984 Milton Bradley toy, which I've never played with myself, but I've uh, discovered it when I was researching for toys and overlooked it when we did the pigs. So we brought him out at last. That's good. I did string toys really quite a few months ago, I think it is, and this is a lovely idea from a magician friend of mine, Mark Setter Ducati. It's a bit like a magic trick. It's a very special way in which that's been joined because this has got a large grey loop and then there's a double yellow loop or gold loop. When you pull that like that, they instantly change places. Isn't that extraordinary? This is a single loop now of yellow or gold, we'll call it, and this is a silver loop, which is a double one. Pull it away and it swaps round. Now we've got a single silver and a two-way gold, and back there again. Every time we pull it, it instantly takes up the new position. Very clever idea, very simple to weave, but you need to join them, of course, with little bits of, 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 of heat of a match. And a very nice, little, almost like a magic trick, a table trick, I think. Just recently I did one on handles. Remember the old um, fork handle I did, you know, with wine and spaghetti? What I'd overlooked at the time was I do have a spaghetti automata with a handle, and it's... Our old friend Mickey, who's eating spaghetti. I should have had it with this one here, but never mind. We'll show him now. Wind the handle. There he is, squeaking away. You've got scissors, you've got to cut them. That's an easy way of doing it. It's much better to do it on a fork here. I'll tell you about that later on. So, little friend, I overlooked. I felt so sorry for him at the end when I realised I'd left him out of my display of handled toys. He's back again, so that's good. There was a... A nice little display, and I found several more of these, of these bandsaw mechanisms, which I like very much. The one I showed, and this is a better version of the one I showed initially, is a little throw ring like that. It's beautifully made, and the idea is to toss it through the air, rather like a little frisbee, 
Um, and then when you finish with it, you just fold it up like that, and it instantly goes into your pocket. So that's a nice, easy one to think about. But here's something they've done, which I've never seen done before, which has made it into a mail order piece. So the idea is to send this to the post as a, as a mail shot. You put a stamp on here, you put the person's name on there. And when they open it up, something springs out, which is this thing here, and it gives an advert what it is you're, you're promoting. It's a, it's a mail shot idea. And instantly, it's, it's, it, I've got several items in my collection which are sort of cardboard ones, which spring out with elastic bands in it. And this is something similar, but it's done with this wonderful bandsaw mechanism spring in the, in the perimeter sort of thing. So that is a mail shot. Stamp it up, address it, and send it to the post. Nice one. Then there's a large one here, which is for the beach. This is one of these double ones as well. It opens up nice and big, oomph, even bigger. And it's actually two forming a sort of, um, well, V-shaped thing. The idea is actually to put it over your head like that. And so when you're on the beach, resting, lying down, the, the edges are here sticking to the sand. And providing there isn't too much wind, it'll protect you from the bright sunlight and stop you getting sunburn and things. So it's a, it's a, it's a little sun guard for people who are having a, a sunbathe and don't want to get too much hot sun on their head. And when you finish with it, you just pack it away, put the elastic band, and it's done. And the last of these bandsaw mechanisms is probably my favourite one, which I completely overlooked. This is something you can actually wear on a belt with your, when you're going on holiday. And it's, would you believe, it's called a springboard. And when you take it out of the package, you give it a quick flip, and oh my, it turns into a game of Ludo. It's a board for a board game. When it came at the time, of course, it had little counters and a pair of dice, etc., etc., to play the game. I put those aside or I've forgotten about them because this is what intrigued me. They showed this, they showed a chessboard, they showed a backgammon board, each of them having this marvellous mechanism, which came on like that. And when you finish with the game, you pack it away in here and put it in your pocket or put it on your belt and carry on with your holiday. What a lovely idea that is. Springboard, instant board games to be taken to the beach. Very nice ones. This one that I forgot when I was doing one on trains. I did little ones on engines and trains, and this is a charming one which I picked up in the 1980s. It's a very small kid thing, this is. It's got a little wind-up mechanism here. So when you wind it up, it does a superb little comical action, a sort of nodding effect, which is so sweet. Isn't that nice? So originally bought in about 1984, and that has delighted children at parties ever since, for a long, long time. It's got a very, very nice action to it. So I think I've done a little more research to find out what other toys have I missed, and I've got to go through and find some other ones. So there's a start anyway. Toys that um, had got overlooked, missed, and now at last I've got them out into the open to show you. They're very, very clever ideas. Most of them, some of them were quite brilliant, I think. So more to come. Beep, <laughs> beep.